American skylines. These downtown districts with tall buildings and developments have become iconic for many cities. I'm sure somewhere like New York, Chicago, or Los Angeles would come to mind when thinking about the most major American downtowns, but every city has created their own culture and reputation somewhat from their skyline. Somewhere like St. Louis has used a landmark to make their downtown stand out with the Gateway Arch, or Seattle with its Space Needle. All these things have affected the way these cities are seen by the rest of the country. If we jump to the topic of today's video, Oklahoma City, we can now decide what kind of culture the city has created for itself currently. It's a relatively small skyline for its size, with one large building here. Nothing stands out, but soon this could be changing in a major way. Plans for the tallest building in the country have been unveiled in the city, and the details on what this will be and how it might affect the city are fascinating. So today I'll take you through the project to see what it will look like in the future and if it will actually be built. Before that though, I want to quickly ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel. We make geography content like this every week, so if that's the kind of thing that interests you, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future uploads. Thank you! So let's start by looking at Oklahoma City in its current state, and how this project would fit into the city. Currently, it has a population of 681,000, up from 579,000 in 2010. It's growing at a pretty rapid rate for a city of its nature, and there isn't a lot of talk about the city on the national stage. If we go into the downtown where this project will take place, we see a relatively small skyline. Obviously, the main thing that stands out is the Devon Energy Tower, which is 844 feet tall, and was built in 2012. This building is 344 feet taller than the next best, the Bank First Tower, at 500 feet, built in 1971. In fact, the rest of this tallest building's list goes to older developments, besides the BOK Park Plaza, which was built in 2017. Besides that, the next newest would be 1984, so this paints a picture of what the skyline is currently experiencing. It's relatively old for a city that is growing at its rate, and the newer developments are not popping up at the speed you'd expect. The Devon Energy Tower is a modern and very pretty building but it almost sticks out like a sore thumb when put with the rest of the downtown. And if you took it away, you'd see a very lifeless, old skyline for a city of almost 700,000 people. Now let's get to our project, the Boardwalk at Bricktown. So this all started with the Oklahoma City Thunder, the city's NBA franchise. 21 years ago, they moved to the city and played in the Paycom Center, which is located at the south end of the downtown. This arena is known as the smallest in the NBA by square footage, and is one of the oldest in the league at 21 years old. With its current size, it would not be able to secure a long-term lease with an NBA team, which meant one thing. The city needed a new arena for the team. So very recently, in December of 2023, a vote was passed to approve a new home for the team. Plans immediately came out for a $900 million development to be built across the street from the current Paycom Center, at the current site of the Cox Convention Center. This would give the team a lot more room to work with, and would require the current site to be removed to make room for it. This would also mean the Paycom Center would have to be torn down, with there being no market for two arenas across from each other. After this was approved, plans were put forward by California Architecture Studio AO, in partnership with Madison Capital to build a 1,750 foot high riser across the street from the new arena in this current spot here. This would have made it the second largest building in the country behind the One World Trade Center. The two companies were looking into building a major development in the city, with them seeing it fit for something like this, with a low unemployment rate, rising wages, and major growth. When the plans for the Oklahoma City Thunder were approved, things changed. The new arena would cost $900 million, so Scott Madison seemed to decide that if that much money could be spent on the sports team, it would make just as much sense for his company to spend a billion dollars on their design. Getting even further into this though, the plan was changed for the Legends Tower to instead reach 1,907 feet in the air, making it over 130 feet taller than the One World Trade Center, and making it the fifth tallest in the world. Now, why does this plan make sense in comparison to the new Oklahoma City Thunder Arena? Well, we have to get into the details of the structure to see. 
According to the developers, the project would bring Las Vegas-style glitz to an already vibrant Lower Bricktown area in downtown Oklahoma City. The project will cover more than three acres and is expected to have over 2 million square feet of residential, retail, and entertainment development, including two hotels, condos, apartments, stores, and restaurants. To start, the three smaller towers at the boardwalk would be the first to be built, with these being home to some affordable apartments, as well as possibly parking garages for the people that would live here. Those three 345-foot towers are scheduled to begin next year, with the Legend Tower, the tall one, being started as soon as those are completed. At the top floor of the super tall tower, there would be a public observatory, restaurant, and bar where visitors can enjoy what I can only assume is a view of the entire state of Oklahoma. Now taking a step back, I know what you may be thinking. This is insane, and there's no way it makes any sense. It will be twice as tall as the next tallest building in the city, with that building already being over 300 feet taller than the next best. It will look completely out of place in the skyline. And with that part, you are absolutely right. This development could change the city forever. Being placed outside the central business district, it would look insane in contrast to the rest of the city. And if you think the Devon Tower currently sticks out like a sore thumb, my goodness would this be so much worse. It will look insane, and with the flat nature of the metropolitan area, I'm sure you'd be able to see this building from insanely far away. But what a legacy it would be to leave for the city, despite how it looks. That would be their landmark, their crowning jewel, and it would draw more than just a bit of attention to the city. I mean, it would be massive, you'd probably be able to see it from New York if we're being real here. Now obviously, you and I have questions, and so do a lot of other people. When the announcement was made, construction site the B1M made a tweet stating that Oklahoma City doesn't exactly have the hyper-dense urban dynamic known for producing super-tall skyscrapers. There are also concerns about the prevalence of tornadoes in the region. Now diving a bit into tornadoes, I'm not entirely sure how this could affect the situation. I do know that it could be the main thing that holds it back. The worry of tornadoes in the area and how this could affect the development in the situation that it happens has to be a worry, and I'm sure it will be a problem to get the surety and confirmation that it can withstand that situation without something catastrophic occurring. Now, will it be built? Well, I think this project is a lot more real than people might think. The developers hope to start work on the project in 2025, as I previously stated, with no confirmed goal for a completion date. Right now, there are really only two things holding them back from actually starting construction. The first problem is just that it's yet to be approved. Obviously, that's the first thing that needs to happen within the city, and there will definitely be opposition. But the idea of what this could do for the city culturally could be enough to push it through that phase. The second thing that needs to be changed is the zoning. Currently on the proposed site, it is zoned as a simplified planned unit development which is somewhat good news, because it basically means it's there to promote residential clustering and open space for new residential building in the zone. The developers are currently preparing a new SPUD application, which would go to the Planning Commission for a recommendation and then the City Council for a final decision. As well as that, the current limit on the parcel is 300 feet in the air, so they would have to have the height limitations lifted or extended over 1,000 feet upwards. But if they can get both of those things done, they are in a very good place to get this built. The best news is that they have local support. The city council approved a $200 million tax increment financing to be paid to the project after the first two apartment buildings are built. It will give the city new housing, and they actually seem excited to get this off the ground. I personally would love to see this project built. It would be so interesting for Oklahoma City and it would sort of shove itself in the face of buildings and cities on the coast, in places like New York. It would also sort of put a challenge out to the rest of the country to try and beat Oklahoma City. Yes, this seems like insanity, but it is significantly closer to actually happening and being built than any of us would anticipate. I'll keep you updated. Thanks for watching.
Thank you to the members this week. Wise Enderman of the Soil, KMS162, JL, Sir JC17, Bryson, Jerome McCall, Dominic Psyche, Rosebud4, Jeremy Jarvis, Christopher DeAngelis, Dark Bird, Elijah Path, Big Pasty, Jeremy Crone, Wolflink73, Snyder Swine, Florida Jake, Stormy Knight, Nikita Martinoff, Benjamin Whitings, Ryan Devins, and Haz of the Wolf. I appreciate you all so much. You do genuinely really help me, and I appreciate all of you just donating to me on a monthly basis. It's really helpful. If you want to become a member, the link is down in the description below. All the money just goes into my savings, so if you want to help me out as a person, that's the best way to do it. Thank you so much.